In the previous video, we saw the basic concept behind classes and using them as blueprints for creating objects. So let's now take a look at inheritance and what inheritance actually means. Well, that means that one class can inherit from another class. So here we have our player class and now I'm going to create a new C-sharp script and I'm going to name it warrior and I'm going to double click it and open it here. Now this colon or semicolon right here denotes that we are inheriting from a class that's well here in this case it's mono behavior. So I'm going to delete all of these functions and instead of mono behavior I'm going to inherit from our player class. So I'm going to say here player class and now we are inheriting from the player class. What that actually means? Well, practically that's the same thing as if you would inherit something from one of your relatives. So if he has or he had a watch and you inherited that watch, so now you have that watch. What that means? Well, that means that if we have this public void info function in our player class, we can call it here in our warrior class. So we are inheriting everything that's inside of this class right here. So we have the health, the power and the name. But you will you will need to be aware of one thing that is if a variable is private, it will not be accessible here in this well child class. The class that's inheriting is called a child class and the class that's being inherited is the parent class. And notice that I've also added this constructor with no arguments because if I remove the constructor and we go back here, we will see that it the, gives us this error because we have inherited here our player. So we have inherited this script and we need to have our, well, no arguments constructor or otherwise we'll have problems. If I were to remove this here and we don't, inherit our player then this error is going to go away but since we are inheriting our player class we need to add this well no arguments constructor in order to remove that problem so now here what i can do or we can simply go in our run game and here i can say warrior so now i'm creating this warrior class right here and i can name it war is equal to new warrior and we can do this by default because even though we did not declare here a constructor, so we did not type public warrior like this, by default, we are going to have this constructor. So even though if we don't have here, we can create it by using this right here. So we can type warrior, W-E-R is equal to new warrior. And as I said, in our warrior class, we don't have any functions but we are inheriting from our player. And here we have the info function. So I can go back here and I can simply say var.info and we can call this function. And if I go back here and run the game, we are going to see player created health zero power zero and we don't have a name. That's because here we did not initialize our player function, but let me just type it like this. So public void attack and here I'm going to say debug.log the player is attacking. So the player is attacking. And if I go back here and run the game, or instead of info, excuse me, I'm going to call attack. Now, if I run the game, we are going to see here printed the player is attacking. And as we saw here, if I go back in the warrior script, we don't have that function. Instead, we have it here. And that means we are inheriting the function from our player to our warrior here. Notice one thing that if I try to access the health variable, I cannot do that. But if I go back here and I say that it's public, now if I type here health, I can actually access the health function here. So let me type it public for each of these. So public again. And for my warrior here, I'm going to say health is, let's say equal to 100 and power is equal to 200 and name is equal to warrior. 
Now if I go here and instead of attack, I call the info class. So now what I'm going to do, or what we are going to do, if I run the game, we see that we have our player created. His health is 100, power 200, and his name is Warrior. And that's, or we did that here in our Warrior class, because we have inherited all of these variables. Now, this is not a good idea to make these variables accessible by typing them to be public, but if we type them to be private, then we cannot access them here. We are going to get an error. And we see that this variable went red, meaning that we cannot access it here. What we can do is we can type here protected, and then we can access it in this class here. But there, this protected variable will not be accessible in other classes. So this is one of the ways that we can do things. What I also want to point out is that we can override functions. And I'm going to remove this. And what this actually means? Well, we have here the attack function. We can declare it also here. So here I can say public void. And because we want to override it, so here we are going to say override and we are going to say attack. We need to declare the same name of the function, so public void attack, but we need to add this keyword override because, well, we want to override this function. And I see that we have here an error, or excuse me, we need to type public override void attack. So what does this override mean, actually? Well, if we call attack now, we see that it will be, well, debugging or debug.log the player is attacking. So let me just remove this right here. I'll just comment it out. And here when we create our warrior, instead of info, I'm going to say attack. And if I go back here, let me just run the game. We are going to see the player is attacking. So we are calling the function from our super or our parent class. So this one right here. But when we override it, so here we are overriding it. Instead of the player is attacking, I'm going to say debug.log. And here I am going to say the warrior, so warrior is attacking. So we saw that we wrote the player is attacking and now we have the warrior is attacking. And again, here we are calling the same attack function. So if I go back here, let me just see here what we have the problem. One other thing that I forgot and that's why we have this problem here is that we need to go back here in our player function and we need to say here public virtual void attack so that we can override it here. So as I said, we saw previously that we wrote in the console or the output was the player was or the player is attacking. But now since we have override the function, we see that we have the warrior is attacking. So if I go back here, we see that the problem will go away. And when I run the game, we see the warrior is attacking. One other thing, and this is my point to, hold, to all of this explanation, is that I will remove this one right here, and I will not mark this one as attack. But we are going to call it here as attack. So notice how it's important, because if I go back here, and let's say that I have this public void attack function with smaller or lower case a, and I'm going to use here debug.log, the player is not attacking. So notice the difference now. So if I go here and I'm calling the attack with capital A, and if I run the game, we see that the player is attacking is printed out. But if I go here and instead of capital A, I type smaller a, and I run the game. Now we see that the player is not attacking is printed in the console. Why am I explaining this? Well, the whole concept of this inheritance that I have just explained is because when we create a C-sharp script, you see here that we have this 
inheriting from mono behavior. That's why we have the start function. That's why we have the update function. And that's why we have the awake function. And that's why we have many other functions and many other variables that we can use. So if you type here something, you see that you can use a lot of these stuff. Well, that's why we or we are inheriting most of those things from mono behavior. That's why we have here on trigger enter 2D function which takes a collider so it takes a collider 2d as an argument and why am i telling you this well i saw that a lot of students have problem with these things that is they call or they don't type the function as they need to so if you type here awake and if i say now debug.log and we see or i'm going to type here called from awake function and i'm going to well simply comment this out right here so if i run the game now we are going to see called from awake function is printed in the console it's really important that you type the same name of the function that you want to call so the awake function has capital a if i type lowercase a nothing is going to happen so if i run the game now nothing is printed in the console that function is not called because we are not calling the right function so we need to type it with capital a and that's why or this is important when you inherit all functions so this is why we have or when we inherit from mono behavior if you want to call the awake function make sure that you write it with capital a if you want to call the start function make sure you copy call it with capital s the same way with the update function on trigger enter we are going to see later in the course we are going to use it to detect collision between two game objects now a lot of students send me a question i did everything as in the course but the objects are not colliding and when i check the the code excuse me in most cases i see instead of on trigger enter with capital o they write it like this on trigger enter with lowercase o or instead of capital t they write it like this this function is not going to work like this so it needs to be called on with capital o trigger with capital t enter with capital e and 2d with well capital d and I also see this, they call it enter 2D with lowercase d. Now, when you do it like that, this function is not going to be called because this is not the same function that we are inheriting from mono behavior. The same way is if I type here awake with capital E, if I go back and run the game now, we are not going to see nothing here in the console so make sure that you check all of these when you write your game if you see that something is not working the awake function is not being called or the start function is not being called then you probably misspelled or you typed lowercase s or something else so this is why inheritance is important and we saw how can we actually inherit from our player class to our warrior class and then we can use these variables if they are public or protected we can use public functions and we can override those functions if we type here public virtual void and then here we need to type public override void and we need to say here attack so attack like this and then we can override the same function and give it another meaning or another assignment to do but we can also call these functions from our super or our parent class so that's the basics behind object oriented programming the classes and the inheritance we have also some other features but for game development and for this course this is what you need to know so this is what this actually means here so when we type here or when we create a class we automatically get this inheriting from mono behavior this is what it actually means so we are inheriting from the player class we have all of these variables and all of the functions the public functions we cannot access the private functions so if i type here private 
and go here and try to access it so if I try to access now so let me just go here and see what I did wrong so we have our warrior okay so everything is okay so if I try to access it now if I type here so I misspelled so I need to say warrior if I type now warrior and info so info we are not going to access we see that it's red and if I go here we are going to get an error inaccessible to due to its protection level it means that this function is private here and we cannot access it if I type it to be public we see that this red goes away and if I go here the error goes away so you can access the public functions you can access the public variables in the child class and as I said or explained what it means here the same way applies here so we are inheriting from mono behavior so we have the awake function from mono behavior we have the start function the update function we also have void fixed update function we are going to see all of these functions later on in the course and also on trigger enter on collision enter so it's also let me just type it here so on collision enter 2d which takes a collision 2d and i'm also going to name it target as an argument and don't worry we are going to see these functions later in the course but i just wanted to point that out so if you see that this function is not working then probably you typed it like this on collision enter or you typed it like this on collision enter with lowercase c or you typed here 2d with lowercase d it needs to be exactly the same because this is the function that's defined in mono behavior and this is the function that's going to be called when two game objects collide with each other if you type it like this then it's not going to be called so make sure that you keep attention for these kinds of mistakes they are really small but they well pass through without you noticing it so this is just what i wanted to point out because i saw previous students had a lot of trouble with it and i'm putting these videos this one and the previous one to explain all of these concepts and what they mean and this being explained then we have covered object-oriented programming so now we are good to go